<coughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, w welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. And uh, today we're we're talking about the well, we're uh, doing the series, uh, the Road to WrestleMania series, a special series that I thought of just because uh, uh, everybody loves WrestleMania. And I thought, you know, since I've been successful with doing interviews and stuff, I wanted to try to find as many former pro wrestlers or or as many current pro wrestlers as I can to talk to before WrestleMania 29 comes. And uh, my second uh, pro wrestling guest today is a legend. It is a legend, no matter what you you, know, you say. Uh, pro wrestling uh, was his in his blood. Uh, formerly known as uh, the tag team of the Killer Bees, I give you Mr. Brian Blair. How's it going, man? It's going great, brother. How are you up there? Oh, it's good. Out there. You, where, where are you at? Where, where, I'm in Minnesota. In Minnesota, that's right. You're in cold country with Jumpin' Jim Brunzel. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you guys keep in contact a lot still? Oh, oh yeah, all the time. I love Brunzy, man. He comes down to soak up our sunshine, and I go up there to talk to your nice people. So oh, that's yeah. The difference. Yeah. 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 Now we got. To Oh sure, yeah. We're we're uh, sadly way in northern Minnesota. I'm like 20 miles away from the Canadian border. So, uh, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm Interesting. Well, you know, you know, America now we got uh, you know with our border patrol, uh, it's working the other way. People are sneaking out of this country. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind uh, sneaking into Florida a little bit because uh, I'm sure you're you're always lucky with good weather over there. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things to do here, that's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. So let's talk about wrestling, man. Let's cook it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I tell you what, you know, I remember watching you way back in in the days of, uh, well, like I got into wrestling more or less uh, uh, back in the early 90s, but I remember wa I watched a lot of videotapes and stuff uh, when it comes to pro wrestling, and I've seen uh, a lot of your WWF stuff. I don't think I saw a lot of your, you were in AWA for a while too, weren't you? I did some AWA, but, you know, I've been in the NWA. I had a great career in the NWA. I had a really good career uh, for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I've done, um, uh, I've been uh, just all over the world with independence. And um, it, it's kind of good and bad that you get branded as, um, you know, a tag team wrestler. As, you know, and Jimmy's a great guy, as I said. And the Killer Bees were a great tag team. But uh, I think I had more success. And um, and was able to express myself a lot more as a singles wrestler than I was as a tag team wrestler. Sure. How, and and how did you uh, like like what was life like growing up for you? And and how did you get into the the wrestling business? Well, um, you know, I grew up uh, from very humble um, beginnings, and uh, I was a pretty good amateur wrestler, amateur football player, um, played baseball, track and field, but just anything to keep my mind off of what was going on around me. And um, I always dreamed about, well, from not always, but from the time of like 12 years old, I, I saw Jack Briscoe on TV and I said, you know, I want to be a pro wrestler. Mm -hmm. And um, Jack Briscoe later on became one of my best friends, uh, him and Paul Wondorf, um Matter of fact, I need to call Paul uh, pretty quick here because I think he's going to ride to the convention in Mobile, Alabama. I just had a a whim to go there. It's on March first and second. So oh wow! One of my bookings uh, from Ricky Otazu. Uh, we were supposed to work in um, uh, New Jersey in Atlantic City on the second and. For some reason, something happened with Bruno. There was some kind of problem there, so I got that date open, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the Mobile scene and um, see what that wrestling reunion's like, because I've never been there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, you uh, So so when you got into wrestling, like, uh, what was the first promotion that, you, that, uh, that accepted you? Championship Wrestling from Florida. You know, that's where uh, Florida, that, that was... That's all wrestling was here in Florida was championship wrestling for Florida. You know, this is before there was cable TV, before there was uh, TNAs or TNNs or yeah. uh, WWFs or WWEs. I mean, this was when everybody was into the territory mode. And championship floor, championship wrestling was from Florida is where, you know, everybody wanted to go because, you know, first off, the weather was great, the payoffs were great, 
um, the talent that you got to work around was second to none. And um, uh, fortunately, um, I, I got to meet Jack Briscoe. Uh, I got to meet Eddie Graham and Buddy Colt and some of the greats that were um, running the territory here and, and had the ends, so to speak, and would give me a chance, you know, to, to break in because in the three summers that uh, uh, between college, I went to the University of Louisville in Kentucky and uh, also went to St. Leo College for a half a semester um, for the uh, for their scholarships. <clears throat> what happened is I signed for camp and you, they fold the football. Then um, uh, I had to wait and went and played wait for Louisville because that was my second choice. And um, in between during the summers, Hiro Matsuda would stretch us uh, and put us through the mill. It's almost like you see UFC today. Oh, sure. That's how it was then, and they beat beat the crap out of you. I mean, but first you'd have to do, you know, a thousand push-ups and sets of a hundred and a thousand Hindu squats and sets of a hundred and you'd get up to that. You had to get up to that amount in six months, which is pretty tough to do. And, um, and probably in those three summers well over a hundred people came and the only three people that stayed um, in Hiro Matsuda's camp and championship wrestling from Florida was uh, Mr. Wonderful Paul Warndorf, Hulk Hogan and myself. Wow. Oh, over a hundred people. You guys were the only three. Oh yeah, that's it. Out of Jeez. well over a hundred. Wow. I mean, some people some people would leave there without their clothes. I mean, because they'd want you to if you didn't, you know, try to hurt them or make them squeal a little bit or, you know, I hated when they'd say, you know, get juice, you know, to, you know, to make them bleed or whatever. And you know, you're here's somebody that just came in just like you and had a dream and. You, you know they want to see who's going to hurt each other to see who's going to stay well that's kind of like the dog eat dog world it was breaking in here in florida and uh, you know fortunately um i you know i guess uh i uh, was one of the lucky ones that you know made it through and uh was able to uh, have a career that was and still is by the way i still enjoy working just uh, i don't work as much but i uh, i had a great career and you know work I've had over 5,000 wrestling matches and Jeez. wrestled in almost 40 trees. And so um, when you wrestle like uh, like a big event yep. Canada or you know, uh, WrestleMania 3, events like that where, you know, you have multitudes of thousands of people, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty dynamic. It's pretty humbling. It's, it's, it's everything all in one. It's like a dream. And... Um, um, to me, I'm a humble person, and I just thank God every day that I had that opportunity. Um, there's, um, you know, there's a saying that I have. You know, you can take uh, the ring, uh, you take the wrestler out of the ring, but you never take the ring out of the wrestler. I, you just always have that feeling where you want to go uh, entertain people, and you want to wrestle, and you, that's my craft, and that's what I done for over, you know, even for 25, 30 years. You know, that's a uh, Huh. For a long time, you know. Yeah, too. I'd say so. And, and so, yeah, so so like when when you uh when you have your your uh, a legendary career like you have, like what what comes to your mind when people say like like when people say that wrestling's fake? What comes to your mind when you when you hear that? Um, I think first off, well, you know, they really don't understand what they're saying because. You know, you can't fake out a, uh, I would say, you know, the bottom line is you, you can't fake out a slam and uh, people get hit and they get, if you want people to come back and buy another ticket, you don't have the luxury of cameras and take twos. Yeah. Um, you gotta, you gotta go out there and perform and, um, you know, they got to truly buy into the fact that you're having a contest, a legitimate contest. So if you can't make them do that, you're never going to make uh, any money unless, you know, you're a few of the gimmick type wrestlers that have, have made some uh, money in the business. But most of them uh, can all go out there and still, you know, um, make every person in there um, understand that, you know, this stuff hurts. And it does hurt. So, you know, I don't like the word fake. I, uh, maybe predetermined uh, ending. You know, it's a, um, it's a, um, 
performance um, between a combination of athleticism and showmanship that um, uh, that's an art, and it's an art that um, you know I, I still love it today. I mean, it's it's great. I can't say enough good things about about wrestling. I hate you know when uh, uh, there's some some of the pitfalls and the evils that come with wrestling. You know, people getting hooked on drugs and you know some of the, the the sad things you know people driving off cliffs in the middle of the night because they've driven too many uh, miles and uh-huh. uh, you know things the, the, the casualties of the road are many but uh, you know if you survive all that you know and look back the joys are also many <laughs> so uh, uh, what what type of injuries have you ever had w- with wrestling or were you one of those wrestlers that never got hurt <laughs> I've had four concussions. I've had uh, my shoulder, right shoulder rebuilt. I've had a new knee put in, a uh, titanium knee put in, which I can still, I wish I would have done that a long time ago. Oh, but uh, I've, I've, after four knee operations, I had a, a new knee put in. But, um, you know, I can still every, do everything I did with that, you know, just uh, as I did before. But I've had over 300 stitches and... Um, bottle stabbed in my hand by Eric the Red in Louisiana and uh, accident of course but um, nevertheless uh, a bad injury I, I broke my thumb it actually dislocated my thumb about as bad as you could ever dislocate a thumb with Tully Blanchard in, Ham- in Hamilton Ontario I tore two of my uh, three fingers um, on my right hand next to my pinky finger um which all got sewn together from a match in Hiroshima, Japan, where uh, Big John said, Mr. Wonderful and myself were wrestling uh, Antonio Inoki, Tatsumi Fujinami, and Kido. So, I mean, those are some of the, uh, uh, besides the bulge discs and the uh, herniated disc, you know, you get a, you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of injuries. I mean, wrestling is, uh, it's a tough, tough, it's a tough sport. I mean, for those that make it to the top, it's a, you know, it's a tough sport. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's why I wanted to ask about the injuries, because I, I want people to, to realize that, you know, that, that you guys, you know, did make, you know, lots of sacrifices. I mean, you know, and, and I, too, don't like it when people say the word fake, you know, or let, let alone predetermined, because, you know, wrestling, whether, you know, it's, it's always going to be a form of entertainment, no matter how you look at it. But it's it's one of those things that that you 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 have to dedicate yourself, you know, basically probably your whole life at the time, and 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 you seem to be one of those guys that uh, that have dedicated yourself to the business uh, even to this day, even though you're not wrestling as much anymore. No, I mean um, I've got a lot of other things going on. Thank God I have a lot of business acumen uh, most of the time, and. Um, I opened up uh, Gold's Gyms here, which were very successful. I've been successful at being a politician, um, which is, by the way, a full-contact sport, you know, because if you're not a liberal, um, you're a conservative in a liberal's world, you get your, you know, they, they'll <laughs> tell everything bad about you and never one thing uh, good about you. So all, all those fans out there don't ever believe the media because, you know, I mean, if, when it comes to politics, because they decide... And no matter what happens and what the truth is, you'll never get it. Was was politics a, a kind of a love for you too after wrestling, or, or was it something you just kind of surprised yourself that you were going to be a part of? Well, I was always interested in politics. Jesse Ventura and I were together for six months in um, in the uh, Kansas City territory, and we used to talk about politics a lot. And, of course, when you talk to Jesse, you uh, talk maybe 10% of the time, and you listen the other 90% of the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, he had some different ideas, uh, very different to some of mine, but uh, at the same time, he had, you know, he would always argue a point and make a point, and he was good at uh, defending his point. So, uh, what do you think about, you know, what, uh, you know, every year during uh, WrestleMania's time, at least since 2004, they've had the, the annual WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, what do you think about yourself being in the Hall of Fame, and who do you think, uh, who would you like to see going in there? Um, you know, I haven't really given that a lot of thought, except uh, I would certainly uh, hope that uh, someday they 
you know, they would uh, bestow that honor upon me. Um, I know uh, uh, Jimmy's being inducted right now into um, uh, what Hall of Fame is that? Uh, they're doing the AWA right now, but uh, I mean, there's a few different Hall of Fames. But this is, uh, um, I've actually got a t shirt where Mr. Wonderful was inducted into it, and um, um, I know it was, uh, they had quite a uh, uh, crowd, and um, it's called, uh, golly, I'm not going to run here. I'm going to tell you, hold on, hold on. It's, uh, uh, it's a professional wrestling, uh, professional wrestling hall of fame, and it's by, uh, I guess they have uh, a senator that helps run it, uh, Hugh Farley, a retired senator. Have you heard of that? Dude? It's uh, PWHF. Uh, PWHF. I, I, I'm not too sure. I don't know if I have or not. But well, I'm not you have sure. to do it. It's uh, PWHF. Okay. And, 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 you know, it's, the Hall of Fame is, you know, I wish it was determined by fan vote. Um, similar to um, how Cauliflower Alley Club used to be. But where I was inducted into, you know, to their, uh, um, to their, um, thing, to their hall, they actually have a wall of fame there. Oh. But, um, which travels with them, and, and that comes up in uh, April, the middle of April, 14th, 15th, and 16th of April, every year. And, you know, there's a lot of people go there as, a lot of people are very, very well respected and that's um, right. a lot of people see each other that haven't seen each other in a long time and get together and uh, accept their awards and you know, just uh, reminisce, I would say. So is there anybody that you that you would like to see be inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame? Um, well, like, uh, I'd have to see exactly, you know, I don't know exactly who's in there and who isn't in there. I mean, uh-huh. I, of course, I know some that are in there, but uh, I couldn't tell you who's who's not in there. Give me a, give me a list of uh, name 10 people off of the top of your head. Like, yeah, I'll tell you one, Don Morocco. I'll tell you another one. Well, Bob Orton Jr. is already in there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Did they ever induct uh, Morocco? I believe they did. Uh, I think they did that back in 2004 or 2000. But I know he's inducted. I know that. I know Hulk Hogan's inducted. I know, uh, uh, let's see. Jeez, they, they just uh, announced uh, Bruno San Martino a couple weeks ago they were induct. So. Yeah, because, well, they would have done that a long time ago, but Bruno wouldn't accept that. Yeah. So, because of the falling out that him and Vince had. Because... <laughs> About everybody knows about that. All that. What do you think about like yeah. the Macho Man Randy Savage being in there? I think he should be born there, without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's uh, you know, him and Ricky Steamboat in WrestleMania three had one of the best matches I've seen in a long time. Maybe ever one of the best, one of the top ten matches ever. Um, in the same matches, and, and of course, that's my opinion. Everybody who wrestles, you know. Kind of like a booty man. Everybody's got one, but uh, <laughs> um, um, that was a great match. And do you know what it takes to do what they do? Knowing actually what it takes to do that, then you have a whole new appreciation. As you see, pro football players come in to try to be uh, pro. All kinds of pro athletes, hockey players, all just everybody that's done everything in sports, and uh, so many of them just don't make it. You know basketball players. I mean, you had Dennis Rodman. I mean, look at, you know, he tried and tried, and he's still trying sometimes. Yeah. I guess, he, you know, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. amazing, but they could never perform to the, um, to the level of a Hall of Fame. Yeah. And, and that's just a thing, too, and because, you know, with wrestling, you know, you guys traveled all over the world, and you hardly have any, any time off. What do you think about the wrestling business uh, today compared to how it was, you know, when you were in it? Well, uh, I think you've got a um, um, a whole different style. Obviously, it's more of a fast-paced style, more um, more of a shtick, Mike. Um, 
There's a lot more storylines, a lot more talking. I mean, it's always been a storyline, always. Sure. But uh, they're just enhanced more because of uh, the, um, the technology and the television rights. I mean, I was just talking to a few of the politicians here locally in Tampa who actually have to bid for WrestleMania, just like a Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't know if uh, people are aware of that. Oh man, my wife just made some awesome food. <laughs> <laughs> Good cook, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a great cook. She better be. I've been married to her for what twenty some years. Now, oh jeez. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. You know, yeah. You know, and 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 that's just you know for for those of you who are wondering who I'm talking to, I'm talking to uh, Brian Blair. And if you don't know the name, you should know the name because he's been in the wrestling business back in the the old days anyway of the. The WWF and the AWA and NWA and and other you know so many things that you've done for the business uh, and of course being a member of the Killer Bees a lot of people remember the Killer Bees just because of, of how unique you guys were in style uh, being a, a high flying tag team and that's uh, you know you see a lot more of that nowadays but uh, I think you guys kind of helped innovate the cruiserweight division more or less. Well, uh, when we were a heavyweight division. Um, he, even though we were lighter in the heavyweight division because in the cruiserweight division kind of evolved from that, Sean. But, um, first off, I, I got to know something. I, 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 we're on um, a show that doesn't say Sean. What's up with that? Oh, because my, my uh, nickname is Frankie. Ah, see, all these years I've known you as Sean. Nobody ever told me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only known you for a little while. That's like, <laughs> that's like B. You, know, you see, Frankie, you might have, everybody calls me B. You know, I'm, that's, uh -huh. um, you know, that's my little brothers and sisters could never say Brian when they were growing up, so they just all called me B. And my mom started calling me B, and my friends call me B. And, <laughs> but uh, so I, that's how B. Brian Blair came about. Uh huh. Okay. And, uh, but uh, now that I got Fearless Frankie on the line, who I always thought was uh, Super Sean, we got some. Uh, you know, everybody's got a little bit of color in their life. Well, I, I've had uh, the nickname of, of Frankie since I was a little kid. I'm only 29 years old, so I grew up. I was born in 1983, so I'm basically just. You know, I'm, a, I'm a young guy, you know. But I, I have a lot of respect for for the business as far as enter anything that involves entertainment, more or less pro wrestling, because. You know that's something I've always I've always had a love for. Even though I never wrestled myself, but I have always admired and respected what each and every one of you guys did out there. You know I'm not one of those type, I'm not one of those type of fans that that think I know it all, but I but I respect the hell out of each and every individual that has ever tried it. So. Well, I appreciate that very much. That you know that you're smart enough and humble enough to say that. And uh, it's like me, you know, I watch NASCAR, but uh, I never raced in in a NASCAR. And, you know, I was really wanting uh, Danica Patrick to win, but uh, because she's a female too, and and I like to see people, you know, you know, and and that's a dangerous sport too, as as you know. But you know, I never drove in that. I never drove a race car, but I appreciate it for you know the for the sport it is, the sure. thrill, the, the crashes. I mean, yesterday, so many people were hurt. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, my prayers are out to all of them. You know, my my best wishes to their families and all that kind of stuff but uh, uh, I understand exactly what you just said you hit the nail on the head there Frankie oh I appreciate that yeah, yeah it's it just oh, it, it, it's just cool to have that respect and that's why I like doing interviews with wrestlers and stuff I'm nobody famous I'm nobody popular I just this is all independently for myself and my YouTube channel so having you on is, is, a, is a pretty big honor yeah it's good to be uh it really is. It's uh, it's great to be on here. Besides, you know, I mean, it's nice for you to say that. But, yeah, uh, it's still good. You know, I mean, I, and and that really goes to the character of who I am. I was taught in, here in the dungeon in Florida, and and by Eddie Graham and uh, Jack and Jerry Briscoe and Pat Patterson and uh, uh, legends that. Uh, came through here, you know, just uh, to always be humble and to, you know, always appreciate, uh, um, you know, the people that pay, the, you know, the business for you, the trail, and yeah. uh, always, uh, I've always been like that, and I still am like that. 
and so, I appreciate you being so humble. Oh, hey, no problem. It's all about respect. We we got to respect one another, no matter how we look at it. <laughs> we may never meet, but you never know, I mean. <laughs> wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be nice if it was all that way in life, too? Gee. Yeah. I wish more people would get along. Yeah, yeah I know. It's, uh, you know, I see uh, uh, how... Once you're in politics, you really see that viciousness of of people and how uh, somebody who you thought was nice and mild and meek can turn out to be a backstab and butthead. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, um, and, yeah, I, I hear you on that. You know, you you see a lot of that. I'm sure, I'm sure you got to see the ins and the outs of just, uh, you know, kind of wonder why did I get myself involved with this if this is how it's going to be, you know? <laughs> Right, exactly. But um, um, anyway, let's go on to the next question. Yeah, the the it's basically the uh, I just got a couple more questions there before we wrap this up. the 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 first question is uh, since we're talking about WrestleMania and since this is a little WrestleMania show, uh, road to WrestleMania show anyway on my channel. Uh, what are your What are some of your WrestleMania moments? Well, obviously, wrestling WrestleMania three was the highlight of my wrestling uh, career as far as WrestleMania. Um, I have stories from all of them. I mean, but um, I mean, all of them from two, three, four, five. But the uh, um, I didn't even work in. I was at five, and it was an argument with Vince, who didn't wound up. I didn't work in WrestleMania five, and that's when it was time for me to say goodbye because I didn't need wrestling. Uh, at least I didn't need WWF. Yeah. And um, um, I had that luxury where Bunsy had to stay around and get jobbed out and all that kind of stuff. And here you see Vince tra trample on somebody that um, had so much talent and did so much for for the business. Uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I was fortunate enough that I was in that position. I had to... Uh, I listened to the richest man in Babylon that take that says um, uh, ten of every dollar you make and save it and make it your first bill before you pay any other bill. And I always listened to uh, my uh, other people in my um, profession that said it's not how much you make, it's how much you save. Sure. How's that good though? Looks phenomenal. You take a picture of that and put it on Facebook. <laughs> what you what what you eating tonight? <laughs> uh, what is that called, Tony? I mean, um, it's pasta with yeah, shrimp. Yeah. She makes a great yeah. recipe. It's shrimp and scallops and else uh -huh. fresh mushrooms. Sounds uh, delicious. <laughs> all kinds of peppers and colors. Every oh, yeah. I'm stepping on her, but anyway, I'll take a picture of it and put it on my Facebook. Oh, that's um, okay. But it's, 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 it's delicious. I mean, one thing, my wife's a good cook, and she couldn't have kept me so long. So, <laughs> so the last question that I, <laughs> the last question that I have before we end this interview is, uh, what advice would you have to any young person who would like to be a part of the pro wrestling industry? Um, you know, um, you got to, you always have to. First off, ask yourself the real question: Am I? How old am I? And if I'm 30 years old or older, I'm going to have a difficult time. What does my body look like? Uh, can I talk? Can I really talk? Is it just me thinking that, or, or, or should I? I need some advice. Am um, I going to go pay somebody $1,500 and call myself a professional wrestler and never have another uh, booking or a couple bookings? Uh, I mean, I've talked to kids that have. Uh, I say kids, but people that I'll, I'll say how uh, how long have you been working? And well, uh, ten years now. Oh yeah. Well, how many matches have you had? Nine. Okay, you've had nine matches in ten years. So um, to me, that means you're greener than baby's poop. And I mean, that's <laughs> that's green, brother. I mean, that just ate spinach. And so you have to ask yourself those questions first. Um, what do I have to fall back on? This doesn't work. If I, if, you know, there's always a risk of failure. So what do I have to fall back on? Do I have an education? Um, maybe I should get that first and then then think about being a pro wrestler. And always go to a reputable um, 
someplace res- reputable to try to break in, like. And if you don't fit into the criteria that I just mentioned earlier, you know, you're not even going to have a chance. They're not even going to give you a second look. And then the the question, the, the thing that I would say, though, if you really had those attributes and you were still hesitant, I would say that 100% of the shots never can <laughs> you're, you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. Uh-huh. And if you can say if you can answer yes to the earlier questions, then I would say to you, if you really want it, then you got to go for it. Because how do you, you you could be the next uh, Stone Cold Rock, Hulkster, uh, Jack Briscoe, um, you know the. the you, Chris Benoit, God bless him, no matter what, you know, I know that's a sad story, which, you know, I had, I had uh, dinner with Chris when he was in Tampa two months before he, all that stuff went on, and I would have never, ever thought that about him, and he was one of my favorite people, like, in the whole world, but something that nobody will ever know made that man do something that is about as horrific as you could ever imagine. Yet, uh, I can't help but that feeling inside of me, you know, certainly questioning his motives, but at the same time saying, what a talent. Chris Benoit was a talent that was just, you know, there's a guy that was the biggest guy in the world and um, not the best talker in the world, but, you know, he took heart and he turned it into money. Yep. He took heart, and he turned it into uh, matches that the fans really loved and appreciated. And, and so that will always be something that we'll, we'll question everybody like you and me and uh, next generations, generations before you, generations that are about to say goodbye. You know, um, you know when I, let me cap that by saying... Uh, um, uh, put asterisks that uh, nobody's promised tomorrow, but anyway, there'll be that'll be a question for every generation, you know. But his talent will never be a question. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. I really, I really yeah. believe that he he should have been in the, in the to the Hall of Fame because the thing about well, Chris Benoit is like, and I said this with uh, with Fred Ottman the other day, or AKA Typhoon. Uh, I said this with him, but it's just like I don't like the fact that. The WWE is like erasing him from memory because he was a great talent. And yeah, it's not good to kill people, obviously not. But I, I personally don't believe that he did it because there's no proof that he did it. But I, you know, I, I just think that they should put him in there anyway because he was, you know, a great athlete. He could, he could, he could wrestle with anybody. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think you got to draw a line. You got to separate them and say, look, this is about uh, about talent. The talent contest. I mean, if you ever watch American Idol, you'll often hear, well, this is a singing contest. Uh-huh. Somebody else is that talent, but this is a singing contest. I mean, certainly, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, I guess, you know, Frank, you just kind of hit it on the head, you know, there's no proof, I mean, that he did any of it. I mean, there's a strong assumption that he did it. I mean, his wife, um, by all accounts, has been known to be uh, have you know little rants of craziness. Uh-huh. So when you put all that together, and Chris being such a humble guy, and um, you know it's just like uh, Daniel, his son had some problems that he had to deal with. You know, as a dad, you always want your son to be the best. That you know, you want him to be better than you, but um, you can only uh, hope and pray and love him and nurture them and, and whatever they turn out to be you got to support them and, um, you don't want to do, I mean as long as they're doing something good obviously but I would say just to get back to the heart of that first question you asked me who belongs in the Hall of Fame yep. it's Chris Chris Benoit I agree well I tell you what there Brian this has been a great uh, interview I really I, and I really mean this when I say this uh, it, it was definitely an honor to talk to you you are definitely one of the 
Let's uh, and 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 I would say ring general too because that's that means more than just a, the name legend. When you call yourself a ring general, I think that's uh, that means that you really uh, people people will always remember you, you know, more or less for for what you've done. Well, that's a big compliment. I really really appreciate that. And and you're right. You know, to be a ring general is and, and you know if you listen read Bret Hart Bret Hart's book, you know him and I you know called the matches. I, mean, I actually. You know, taught Brett the Florida style. He taught me the Dungeon he, uh, Calgary style, and, and we mixed him and meshed him. And Anvil and Brunzi were there for their parts, and we all got along. And just uh, we had a lot of chemistry, and and, and, and you know, it's all uh, all that part of it is, is very very good. And uh, thank you for being a fan, and for thank you for having me on your show, Frankie. I really do appreciate that, and maybe. Uh, uh, I'll be able to do it again because I have so many stories and right now I'm really looking for a, a, a publishing company to look at the notes that I've taken over the years because I can tell the truth um, the, the problem is is that you know how do you protect the guilty some of them like me <laughs> you know, you some, of this, some of this stuff so you gotta be kind of careful where, which way you walk but I guarantee you I can entertain anybody and, and from anybody that's ever wrestled in this business that's made it as a star, uh, as a big time star, up to, up until let's say um, a few years ago, there's a few people now that I don't know quite as well. But um, you know, I've got long, fun, and funny stories about oh, interesting sure. stories, I should say. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and I would love to have you on again because maybe I might do another you know, uh, wrestling thing eventually later on, uh, because uh, I don't just interview wrestlers, I also interview anybody that's pretty much in the entertainment business. If you ever get a chance to check out my YouTube page, there's a there's a tab on there with all the guests that I've had, even when I was on the radio, because I used to be on the radio right. back in the day, and uh, I've interviewed a lot of other former pro wrestlers as well, some that you probably worked with before, and probably some that you probably never worked with, but... Uh, you know, just right. it's just what I enjoy doing. Uh, I do it for free. It's I don't get paid to do all this stuff. Uh, it's just a love of uh, being able to try to entertain people my own way, just like you've done it in, in your career as well. So, so I appreciate having you on, and uh, thanks for the interview. Thank you, Frankie, and uh, God bless you and uh, your family, your friends, and um, all the fans out there, and um, keep enjoying wrestling, and I'll keep doing the same with you. All right, man. You take care. Have a good rest of the Sunday. Okay. All right, bye. Nice. That was the legendary Brian Blair, and and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the interview that we just did. Uh, not as long, as, but still a good interview. Anyway, very lengthy. Lots of I always enjoy when uh, when former pro wrestlers are nice enough to share to come on the show and and share stories that you've never heard of, especially the ones that you've never heard of, because in some respects, you know they're. People tell stories that uh, you know you you've heard millions of times, but when somebody can can actually tell you a story uh, that you've never heard before, that's brand new, but but you know that person's known their entire life. I think it's it's exciting, you know, to learn you know about things that you like. And, and I've always been a big pro wrestling fan, and I always will be. You know, you can make fun of me all you want. You can say whatever you want about me, but I you know I know what's real and I know what's not real. And, you know, I'm just, I'm a real fan. I'm a very dedicated fan. I don't have shitloads of merchandise or, or you know, title belts or never been to a pay-per-view. And I've only been to two live events, uh, two TNA events thus far. But but I, I consider myself a real fan just because I know the in, ins and outs of the business. I've done a lot of research. I've had friends that were part of the, you know, that uh, love wrestling as well. And it doesn't make me perfect, but it just, it just... It's just something that I like, and it's something that I will always enjoy. That's why I enjoy talking to all these former pro wrestling stars because they're nice enough to share stories and nice enough to come on, and I always appreciate that, let alone anybody else that I can get on. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my special second episode of my Road to WrestleMania 29 uh, edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. There'll be more videos coming up soon as well, and... Uh, more interviews as well. We got a few more people that, uh, and I'm gonna try to do what I can to get uh, as many former pro wrestlers as I can to talk to you before April 7th, Sunday, April 7th, 2013, which is 
WrestleMania 29 Sunday. And by the way, it's not nothing I'm getting paid for. This is just a little independent thing that I'm doing myself. And who knows, maybe the world will get around. And again, maybe it won't. But <laughs> I'm not worried about that. I'm just happy to do this. So again, thanks again for uh, tuning in to the show. And uh, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you next time for another great interview and videos right here on the Frankie Slauson Show on YouTube.com.